Hi, I'm going to try to make this a little shorter of a, of a uh, video than I usually do. Um, this is coming from a former socialist, uh, from someone who is a libertarian now. Um, a lot of times, as you see in presidential debates and everything with progressives, with uh, liberals, Democrats, Republicans, conservatives, whatever it may be, um, you always you always hear them saying we're going to create jobs that they're going to create new opportunities and jobs for everyone in the United States uh, the way that we have to do that is we have to pass some sort of regulations to help jobs prosper when really in reality all regulations do is destroy jobs um, it makes it easier for the large corporations who create the regulations to game the market. Uh, there are a few examples of this, of which I could give you, um, that is very prevalent within society that is actually well accepted as a fact of something that actually helps the middle class, which is actually steeped in superstition which is funny, and um, flawed economic thinking, like Keynesian economics. Um, one of these things, one of these regulatory actions that the government proposes and puts forward in the guise of helping out the poor people that make minimum wage is the increase in the minimum wage. Not only the increase in the minimum wage, but the, the, the standard that there has to be a minimum wage. Now, the minimum wage is not something that helps poor people out. It's not something that helps people out. All the minimum wage does is increase the prices of everything, um, deletes the jobs for people who are not performing at a certain standard that might meet $9 per hour. As so, if you look at, if you look at it this way, the minimum wage is setting a standard of which a corporation can buy your labor for, or a company can buy your labor for. If you think that you are worth $9 an hour, and you go to a company, and the company says, well, no, it probably, most likely, means that you are not worth $9 to them an hour. So that means what you have to do is you have to go out there and work into building your skill set just a little bit more so you are worth $9 an hour. And how do you do this? Well, usually in a market where the economy does not have a set standard of the minimum wage, you would go out and get a job that required the employer to pay you a little bit less. Maybe instead of being worth $9 an hour, you went to a job that paid you $2 an hour. Now this seems ridiculous. How can you live off of $2 an hour? Well, you're not supposed to. These jobs, these jobs that are very low paying, would be able to give you enough money to get certain goods and services as though if everyone's wages were lower, deleting the minimum wage, it would be a lot easier to get things because this would decrease the amount of money that it takes to buy certain things because labor is now cheaper for everything. And it is determined upon the market value, which the market value is being somebody's understanding of what they are worth, worth and what their labor is worth. You might say that any company out there would pay their consumer, uh, their employees little to nothing for doing anything. But then they would call it uh, exploitation. But the thing that we do not understand and that we overlook when it comes to these things is that the person who is selling their labor has the right to say no and go to a competing agency who might actually pay them a little bit more for their labor. In fact, if I went and I 
went to a help desk position and they said, we are only going to pay you $20,000 for your labor. I could say no. And if I did say no, they might do one of two things. Move on trying to find somebody else who might be able to work as a help desk technician for $20,000 a year, or they might propose a higher offer of which still fits their needs, still fits their ability to pay me for my service for the help desk service and that I will be comfortable enough to take to work for them. That is how the market works. The market is based upon voluntary interaction between two or more individuals. Um, it is about the selling of labor the selling of goods and services, also the buying of labor and buying of goods and services, all through voluntary interaction. Once any obstacles are put into place by law, by governmental law, then it just makes it harder for people to start their businesses and harder for people to actually get jobs. This is why the government does not create jobs. It never creates jobs. It destroys them. Regulations and gaming the market destroys jobs. Now, you might say, like me, when I was um, a progressive, that Franklin Delano Roosevelt, the best president we've ever had, which is what I used to think, created tons of jobs through the public works programs. But you have to look underneath the surface, underneath it all. What the public works program did was that it sent a president that only the United States government could create these jobs that are individually for the public service, instead of a decentralized effort by people creating a job where the job was needed. Sure, we were in the economic slump. There was massive bank failures. But the thing is, is that even though a centralized authority came into power to fix it all up and tidy it all up and give people jobs instead of relying upon the decentralized effort of the community, even though they did that, does not mean it is the only way to do it or even the best way to do it. So the fact in the matter is that the people of the country would have figured out some way to decentralize and come up with a better solution and not only one solution to the problem which might be building roads and building bridges and everything else like that, but we would have came up with several different solutions to the problem, several different solutions of which the democratically elected pursuit of happiness would have came up with. So if more people wanted cars and roads, more people would have been working on the road instead of relying upon a centralized authority's own individual thoughts of what should and should not happen, the entire democratic society would come up with some sort of solution. And in fact, many solutions depended upon what the market wanted. This has been Lapse of Apathy, coming to you to talk about economics from the very little amount of knowledge that I have behind it and the accumulated knowledge from individuals like Peter Schiff and Stefan Molyneux. I give them props and I give Murray Rothbard and all that are in the, the, um, the field of Austrian economics a tip of the hat if I were wearing a hat um, and I really urge you to look up Murray Rothbard and Austrian economics, and of course Peter Schiff, and um, although I really don't watch him that much, I know my friend does, um, you should probably 
watch uh, Max Kaiser as well on RT. Uh, this has been Labs of Apathy again, and goodbye.